Welcome to Focus on a Scholarship. I'm Jale Rezaei, Associate Dean of Graduate Education and Research, and your host for today's session. Our goal at the graduate school and university libraries is to bring a focus and awareness to the exciting scholarly and creative achievements of our academic community. Our guest today is Dr. Reed, an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry at Eastern Kentucky University. Dr. Reed is a National Institute of Health Award recipient and 2010 Esther Bauer Award winner. Her research is in traumatic brain injury. Welcome to our program, Dr. Reed. Thank you Please for tell me. us about uh, your research in traumatic brain injuries. Sure. Um, one of the big things about traumatic brain injury, especially with um, let's say war, returning war veterans, is a lot of them have received a traumatic brain injury due to a roadside bomb, and right now there's no cure for those injuries. So what we're looking at in my research is possibly a cure to be administered after the injury is sustained to these patients. Okay, well how did you become interested? in this field? Well, actually, it's a really interesting um, type of question. During my mostly graduate studies at the University of Kentucky, I worked with Alzheimer's disease. And at the very end of my research, I received funding to work on a traumatic brain injury problem. And so with that began mostly a new research focus for me. And I just thought, this is a really interesting field because there's such little work that has been done. And with the war going on, there was such a really strong need to find a cure or a treatment for not only just war veterans, for just other people that have suffered falls or have had injuries and there's no type of treatment for that. So that's one of the main reasons of why I got started with this type of research focus. So how does this research relate to your teaching? And does it inform your teaching? What is the relationship? Well, actually, it complements a bit of my teaching. Um, I teach a lot of neuroscience and neurochemistry classes. And with that, students become more interested in the brain and how the brain works with different types of medical conditions. And traumatic brain injury is one of the injuries and one of the conditions that we do study in that course. So they find it very interesting to see how just a little bump on the head might trigger all of these other effects that happen in your brain and make memory very, very hard and learning new tasks extremely difficult with such an injury persists. So you're talking about the students being interested. Do you collaborate with the students? Do the students work outside the classroom? Yes, I actually do have about six undergraduate students working for me this semester as well as one graduate student all working with a traumatic brain injury project. Mm, that's that's great. Well, I, in your introduction, I mentioned uh, that you were a recipient of uh, Esther Bauer Award. Could you tell us a little bit about that award? Sure. The um, Herman Esther Bauer Award is an international research award. Um, it's given to younger type of researchers who are interested in focusing their research on a specific chemical that's called 4-hydroxynone now. So what this chemical does is it develops oxidative damage to the brain and it's very harmful to the brain. So it's all about about that harmful aspect of what this chemical does in the brain. And with my research, what a couple of my students are is looking at how you can have a treatment procedure for traumatic brain injury and how that will actually compact this um, particular chemical from reacting in the brain. Okay. Um, has your scholarly activities created other opportunities for you to get involved in um, other type of professional um, activities? Um, yes, one of the activities that I've been heavily involved with due to the scholarship is a lot of mentoring aspects have come up. Not only mentoring a lot of EKU students, but I'm also mentoring some uh, neuroscience scholars around the country. I have scholars in California that I'm mentoring as well as those that are in Pennsylvania. That's uh, fascinating. Uh, now, let me turn that around. Do you have any mentors, or have you had any mentors that uh, uh, you learned from, and what did you learn from them? Well, you should always have mentors. I mean, no matter what age you are. So I have had mentors at the University of Kentucky. Um, Dr. Alan Butterfield has been my mentor during my PhD work and is still my mentor, um, especially with grant projects and things of that nature. So he's been a very big impact. Um, he actually 
recommended me to um, nominate myself for the Esther Bauer Award. Um, so it just goes to show that mentoring is always a very big component and doesn't just kind of stop after you've graduated from school, but it's always there in your life. Well, that is great. Uh, and perhaps you will be interested in mentoring maybe some of the faculty. Uh, one of the issues, especially with the new faculty that start at EKU, uh, is always balancing uh, the workload. Uh, you are teaching new courses, and sometimes uh, the workload might be three or four courses that you have to teach. How do you balance uh, your work, uh, research, your teaching, and your research, and any services that you do, like mentoring, um, and your personal? life. It's challenging because they're only 24 hours in a day so you can't do everything every day so prioritizing things is a very big issue. Um, one thing I do especially with my research is that I work with students for a specific amount of time certain days a week so I don't become overwhelmed, they don't get overwhelmed, so the times that I'm not in the lab working with them, I spend focused on my work, um, getting my slides together, having office hours, talking to other students that are taking classes with me, um, and then also whenever else there's time, I try to be social. You can't just you know, work all the time. You have to have a creative outlet. So if that's just running down the hallway and talking to a colleague about what they did this weekend. But you have to always try to balance things out. You can't overwhelm yourself, which is the work aspect. Well, that has been great. And I hope uh, after watching this session, some faculty will seek you as uh, mentors. Thank you. Thank you. That is it for this edition of Focus on Scholarship. Please join us next time as we continue our series of webcasts celebrating the scholarly and creative achievements of the faculty and staff at Eastern Kentucky University.